Good afternoon and welcome to the channel. Today we'll be looking at the Holt Pharma G660. Decent software to money, 320 bucks delivered to your door. So I can't really complain too much for what has happened or gone wrong with this saw. We'll take the side cover off and kind of start there. Nothing really went wrong with the side cover, just kind of something I want to cover. Two wear pads for the chain and two bolts. I've seen a lot of people run their bolts to the inside with a nut underneath the wear, the wear pads. I did a little different. I ran the bolts from the inside out so the nuts are on the outside. So they loosen up, you can see it right away. And when you're using it, turn it off, take a pair of pliers, tighten them back down no big deal tighten it up and move on when I first put this together I probably didn't have those tight enough they did come they did rattle loose I lost lost a couple no big deal one of the main things that is happening to this saw it's happened since day one sometimes the oiler doesn't want to oil or oils too much even with adjusting it, it still does the same thing Maybe the oil I'm using, I use cheap oil from TSC, Baumgart, Harvest King. I don't use steel. I use the cheap stuff. Is me. I do spill it sometimes. Transporting it, forget to put the lid on with hot tight enough, tips over. Yeah, I'm messing the back of your truck. Yeah, I think everybody's done that. But, and exhaust gasket had one blowout. 99% my fault took the muffler off before I even fired it up, before I put fuel in it, before I did anything, took the muffler off, made sure there's nothing in there, loose or whatever, made sure, you know, everything's tight. I put it back together, I must not got the two inside bolts tight enough to hold it to the muffler to the jug. Exhaust manifold, or exhaust gasket blew out. What do you expect if you don't get stuff tight enough? It's gonna happen. The only other complaint I've had Two other complaints that I got with this saw is a carburetor. The carburetor works great. Not a problem. What I didn't like is when I fired this up, let it sit there and idle for a little bit. First tank. Gave it a little bit, a little bit of throttle. No problem. Gave it a little bit half throttle and it wanted to stick. Well, I'll show you what caused the throttle to stick on me. It was an easy fix. It took me a whole five minutes or so to fix it. I figured some major thing that was going to, have to be, you know, have to send it back, do whatever. Yeah. As long as you got some stuff sitting around in your shop, you can fix it. It's quite simple. Get the fuel line off there. Little bit of fuel. I'll just take the cap off the tank, put it back on, and you're good. No big deal. Stuff happens. Should have remembered to do that before I took that off. My fault. Again. Now we take the linkage, pop it out. Of course, it doesn't want to just pop right off like it did for me about 20 minutes ago. Should have just left the carburetor off, but what fun would that have been? Having the carburetor off before you do a video? It would have been no fun. it out. That's for the covers the carb screws for the carb adjustment. There we go. 
Something always holds you up every once in a while. It happens to everybody. Alright. Fiber is sitting on the saw. Sits on there like this. This is what you'll see. Alright. There's a fuel inlet right here. And right here is a little retainer clip for the rod that holds the butterfly for the throttle. Now, see right here, that screw is what holds it on there. Well, when it was on there, with that screw tight, this had too much of an angle toward, like, downhill, and it's binding this rod up just a little too much, so it wasn't allowing it to return. The spring, my spring might have helped if it was a little tighter spring, a little stronger. So what I did, I had an old carburetor sitting around in the shop here. Took just a little piece of cut the gasket from an old carburetor, cut it down, put it in there, put that retaining clip back on there and screw, put it back on. It gave it flattened it out just enough where it doesn't bind up anymore. Cheap, easy fix. Took me a whole five minutes to fix it. Didn't cost me anything. Other than that, that's been all that I've had problems with with this saw so far. I've ran probably eight. 8 to 12 tanks fuel through it. I mean, I, like I said, any real major issues. Would I buy another one? Yeah. I wouldn't buy another 660. Can I look into G444 or G444? G, you know what I'm trying to say. Or the G111 top handle. As you may be able to see or may not be able to see there I do have some gear in the background I do some climbing here and there for tree removal tree service and I do a lot of going out and getting firewood got a lot of properties I can go to get firewood I don't sell firewood I just go out and get it for my own personal use and so these saws they're used quite a bit and, you know, looking on YouTube before I even bought it, looking just like everybody else did at reviews, how did it work, what was wrong, the good, the bad, the ugly. So far, there hasn't been too much ugly with this. It's been good. Been some bad. But, what do you expect? Now, <clears throat> I do have some other saws that, you know, I'll run on this channel that, do some reviews on. Got a Poulain, little 50 cc. Great for going out and getting firewood. Fires up. It cuts wood. Same thing with this. Fires up. It'll cut wood. Got my steel MS170. So I use for a climbing saw. Not really a climbing saw, but we strap it to my belt. You go up a tree. And you cut. One more it needs to do. 170 bucks. Compared to 350 to 600 for a climbing saw, I'll use the MS 170. Got an old home light, a little 45 cc power stroke, a 20 inch bar on it. It does run surprisingly for being a 2003, and I use it here and there. It may become my next little in the tree saw just because it's got a little more power than the little 170 does, but also going a little heavier so. I don't know how well that'll work. But this channel is about, you know, saws, kind of reviewing them, going over them. We'll rebuild a couple here and there. This one, I'm looking at doing a little port job on the cylinder before I do a big bore kit on it, just to see how good that does. Oh, you know, just kind of porting it before I completely go and rebuild it again. Well, not again, but rebuild it. This channel. I'll show some climbing here and there, climbing trees, felling trees, mostly just for firewood, nothing major, not going to do anything really around the house or anything like that, nothing technical, just can I show you how it is, what you do, some rigging gear, some climbing gear, may do some reviews on climbing gear, but more it's just going to be do geared towards saws and rebuilding saws, or any two stroke or four stroke little small engine for that matter, but Hopefully, kind of, oh, another thing with these saws. Everybody on YouTube is, you know, 
always asking in comments of different people has reviewed them. What do you use for fuel or for fuel mixture? I just use regular steel oil. I run a 50 to 1 mix. A lot of people say they use a 32 to 1, 40 to 1. I run 50 to 1. I tried 32 to 1 in this saw and I killed mosquitoes in a whole one block area at my house. It would just turn into a smoke machine. I run 50 to 1 in all my saws. The only thing I've run 32 to 1 in was an, some old home lights from the 70s. Just because they might need that little bit of extra oil in there on those old worn out cylinders. But hopefully, answer some questions for you. I know I did some rambling. First video that I'm putting up on YouTube. Not really going to edit too much. Just going straight from the camera here. Straight up. Just going to be a full send video. So hopefully, if you guys have any questions, put it down in the comments. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that bell. Maybe we'll learn something together. Because I don't know everything there is. I doubt that all of you out there knows everything there is. Put our heads together. Combine them. I bet we can figure something out. It's not all rocket science. Nuts and bolts. Fuel and spark. What more do you need to know?